be there, everyone's going to be there, I need to put on a clinic because at that time everyone was saying I oh, was the best fight in the UK but then obviously he'd stop me so I'm like oh maybe maybe Liam isn't that good maybe he's just been found out here so then I was thinking have I just been found out I'm like, oh, sure these have been found out so I was like fighting against myself my own demons I had to stay mentally strong to show that I was more than that and then in the first fight I sat down after round one and my leg was in agony and by the end of round five of him still kicking my fight in the rematch, I couldn't feel a thing still, but my mindset was so mentally strong then, I think he could have hit me with an iron bar in that fight and I wouldn't have felt it. After the fight, the ambulance had to come and take me to hospital because I passed out in the after party and I got to, to hospital, I'd stay in overnight and I had a really bad concussion. And that was with how hard he hit me in round four, but I, would, I was in such a, a mental focus that it didn't even have any effect till after the fight. If you want to be the best at it, you've got to be obsessed by it, you've got to give your life it, you've got to live it, you've got to breathe it. You're willing to go that extra mile just where certain people aren't willing to go. Anyone can come in a gym and kick the pads and spar and do this, but when they're tired, it depends, are they willing to do another round? Are they going to get back on the pads afterwards? When you can't breathe anymore, you know, you've been hurt to the body in the middle of a, like round 10 of sparring and a fresh opponent comes in, are they going to get out? Are you going to stay in and you're going to keep going? So obsession is massively important in anything, not just fighting, just in any walk of life where you want to be successful. I just used to get in there because I used to love it. I used to walk around school and playground just daydreaming about when my next fight where I'd be sat in class not paying any attention whatsoever. All I could think about was getting out and going to the gym. And eventually I started on the dinner hour running from my school up to the gym, doing some quick pads with Richard and then running back to school. And that was like my, on my dinner hour and stuff like that. So I, I was obsessed by the sport and I was obsessed with fighting. When I walked through this door, I did not want to just fight to like turn up to fights and make up the numbers or anything like that. I wanted to be a champion and that was that. And I'd always stay behind afterwards. And after the class, I'd go on the bag upstairs on my own. I used to use my, my, my digicam, my dad's recorder and stuff, and just film myself to make sure I thought my stance were okay and stuff like that. And that's like, I think, sort of mentality that takes you from being just a, a fighter to a champion. I had my first fight at 14. <laughs> yeah, no one ever questioned it because I looked quite old for my age and, and so I got away with it. And then, but I ended up like fighting men. So I was like 14 fighting men. I think when I was 15, I fought a 20, 28 year old, I think he was. I knocked him out. <laughs> Did never ever used to cross my mind that I was fighting a fully grown man at all. It was just like, this is the fight and I, I, I just loved it. It was after my 29th, my 30th fight, I went 29 fights unbeaten and my 30th fight, I fought a Thai champion. And um, he was like elite level, top, top level. I never fought anyone that good. I was 18 and in round two, I knocked this guy down with a left hook and I just thought, oh, he's just the same as every other fighter. I'll finish him off now and that's that. I went in to finish him off, he survived the round and then he got up and in round three, four and five, he destroyed me. And I mean, he just wiped to the floor with me. I remember when I dropped him with the left hook, his eyes rolled into his head and then he came back up and he started smiling at me and he didn't have a gum shield in and he had blood all over his teeth. And I thought, this guy's crazy. And he just, he absolutely destroyed me, battered me. And I remember after the fight, I was thinking, right, if I want to fight these guys, I need to be able to know how they fight as well as how I fight. And if I can mix both the styles together, I just said, I, I was seeing a girl for the time as well. I've been seeing her for three years. I just went home and went, sorry, it's over. I'm off to live in Thailand. And that were it. I just, she was devastated, and I said to my mum, I said, Mum, off. I went on the 15th of December before Christmas, so everyone was mad at me for ruining Christmas. But I said, this, I said, I can't have this in my head over Christmas because my head is going to go. I need to like go out there and just make sure that and see if I can live at that level. I don't want to be like the nearly guy. I said, I want to get that level, and I want to be the one that is getting in the ring knowing I'm going to win at that level. I don't want to be fighting these guys thinking, oh, am I good enough or not? I want to get in there and know. So I just went out to Thailand and I. Uh, I learned to fight their, their way and I probably had about 15 fights there over the space of two years. Um, so I was fighting really regular and I had some of the best, best experience in my life and some of the worst. Getting out of your comfort zone is massively important. And again, that, that comes down to the same thing as obsession. I, I think you can't just be comfortable in what you're doing. You need to be out of your comfort zone. Like in training, you need to be in six or two, eight weeks out of your comfort zone. Otherwise, when you fight, it's going to be healthier. 
I said before, I didn't want to be like a, a big fish in a small pond. I wanted to go over there and I went to a gym called Jitty Gym and it had a lot of Thai champions in at the time and top level guys. So I wanted to, to live like they did. I wanted to train how they did. And um, for the first like three, four weeks until I got used to it, it was it hell. I was living on a mattress on the floor. They had me fighting every three, four weeks. But yeah, it, was, it, was, it got tough at some points because I was out there fighting for money as well. I was only 18 when I went. I've not had too much money saved up. If my body's a bit banged up and I'm injured, it didn't matter, I had to fight. So that's what I did. I, I just used to fight as, as often as I could, as regular as I could. There's a big gambling culture in Thailand. So if I had a big fight out there, they were probably going to get some money gambled on it. They're going to be betting. So if they thought I want in as top shape as possible, then they wouldn't whip me into shape. And I mean, like they'd have me up at six running, and I'd be the last one out of the gym at six p.m. at night, and they'd make sure that I were on point. Like I say, I were there for money, and I said, right, I'm going to just bet on myself. So if I didn't win, I had no money. So I had to win. <laughs> I had to win. But at one time, I bet on myself, and the whole gym bet on me, and I lost. And um, I'd bent all my rent money on myself and everything, and I lost the fight. And then three days later, I was I banged up badly. And he said, look, you ain't got no money. What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to fight again. So three days later, I got flown down to Phuket, one of the islands, and I had to fight again for my rent money. Um, and I, I won that fight by knockout in round three. And I paid my rent for two months then. But yeah, to fight three days after having a really hard fight, I lost on points. And then to go down there and have to do it again three days later was not nice. My fears at the time were thinking I wasn't as good as I thought I was. So that's why I wanted to go put myself right. I had to face my fears. I had to go to Thailand and, and train with these guys and fight them in Thailand because I thought maybe I'm not as good as I think. I thought there's only one way to find out. And to go over there and then I just have to fight with them every time. I have to train with them every day. And by doing that, that brought me up to the next level. These guys over in Thailand, they've all been doing it since six years old. It's second nature to them, so I'm trying to catch them up. So if I've got, that means staying late while everyone else is eating dinner, that's what I'm willing to do. So I went out there and I faced my fears, but look where it's got me now. It was like the, the end goal of all that was always more important than any fear that I ever felt. can sit around and wait for stuff to happen or you can get out there and make things happen and that is massively important in any walk of life. It don't matter who you are or what you do, you've got to get after it, you've got to chase it, you've got to make it happen yourself because no one's going to get gifted to you, you're going to have to work for it and those people who are working and those people who are just grinding and they are going the extra hour, doing the extra mile, they're the ones that are going to be at the top. Losers always have an excuse. Everyone feels pain. There's no like person out there who's a Terminator. Everyone does. It's just how you deal with the pain. That's what the, makes the difference. A strong mindset will take you as far as you want to go in life. A strong mindset and willing to go that extra mile and obsession, that's a good one that comes with success. Being obsessed with whatever you're doing will bring you success. Like everyone who wants success, they have to do the hard work. Some people try and find a shortcut, but you should never want to try and find a shortcut. Hard work should always be like the, the main thing, and you should enjoy how hard you've got to work as well to get there, because it just makes it that much sweeter in the end. I believe your mind's your strongest weapon, and your body will, yeah, your mind will give up before your body long ever does. You just need to tell yourself it will, like David Goggins and people like, look what they do with their, their body, and it's their mind that's making them do it. But it all comes down to, is the juice worth the squeeze, and is it worth putting everything else back in? Um, or are you just going to quit and just let that be like that? Obviously, as I got older and my friends are going out and stuff, I've had to miss a lot of things like parties and nights out and stuff like that. But I wouldn't change it for the world, you know. You can go out on the piss anytime, but like for the, the life I've led and the, the experiences I've had and stuff like that, I would not change a thing. I have sacrificed a lot and I've probably missed out on a lot, but I've gained a lot more. Is it worth it? Is the end goal worth all the hard work that you're putting through? Is it worth dragging yourself out of bed when your body's in pain? Is it worth getting in there and sparring with some guy who's probably a lot better than you, but you're trying to better yourself? Is it worth round five when you're exhausted and there's 30 seconds left and the fight's even? Is it worth pushing yourself that little bit extra? Is it worth doing running an extra mile? Is it worth getting up at six in the morning doing hill sprints? 
is it worth it? And the answer will always be for me, yes. Thanks for watching guys. The full interview is now live and you can also see the behind the scenes of how this was made. If you want to support projects like this in the future, please consider becoming one of our YouTube members. As always, have a blessed and productive day.